Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. So we are swinging right back into sin, confession, and redemption. I got the opportunity to talk to a relative before he passed away this past January. And I simply told him he needed to confess sin and repent. And when the light shows up, go to it. Don't worry about your wife. And that's pretty much was the conversation. And now he's not here. So for some of you all, I'm not just on here just talking just to be talking. I'm telling you that God has our numbers and he's not playing. I don't know why some people think that, uh, you know, it's just the side of God that is loving, sweet, and kind, and that there is no other part to God but that, because uh, (laughs) there's a lot of people that are finding out that there's the Old Testament God that is allowing all sorts of things to happen, and no one, no one is immune from what God does no one so sin confession and redemption in Isaiah 59 surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save nor his ear too dull to hear but your iniquities have separated you from your God whose iniquities whose wickedness has separated you from God you see sin doesn't just offend our holy God but it does what It creates separation, doesn't it? It creates division. It causes people to backslide. It causes people to not be in the good circle, so to speak, any longer. It causes people to lose everything, Lord Jesus. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. I want to talk to God. I want to tell him everything that's going on. However, I don't think he's really listening. Why? Because, because why? It's your sins that have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. There's the answer. After a while, don't you get tired of people when they say, why, why? And then you give them the answer and they're still saying, well, why, why? Some of you all got daughters, (laughs) granddaughters, sons, grandsons. Will you just stop? asking so many questions I'm giving you the answers well if you feel so frustrated about that concerning your offspring then uh, how do you think God feels when he's telling you that it's your sins the reason why he will not hear for your hands are stained with blood Most of us know it's not that deep, but others, oh, it is that deep. Even if you weren't the one that pulled the trigger, oh, Lord Jesus, are we stepping on somebody's toes? Your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt. Somebody had a hand in some foolishness. Some of the people who do this sort of thing, it's on a grand scale. And they still think that they're getting away with something, but they're not. Your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken lies. Don't you love, and I'm just saying this tongue in cheek, but you got these individuals that they'll do some real dirty, messy things. And then soon after, what always follows is the lies, right? Or they'll say something that's really offensive or ugly or dark or mean-spirited or what have you. And then when called out on it, they're going to speak the lie. That's why you have to have the witnesses. That's why you have to have the documentation. That's why you have to have the video. And you might even have to strong arm, depending on what type of profession you're in. You see? Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. Can I say that again? No one calls for justice. The reason why people get away with what they get away with, one minister said, is because people forget about the history. Lord Jesus. They forget about the past. And when they forget about the history, they forget about the past. What? were deemed to repeat the past, the history. 
That's why every single February people keep being reminded of what black folks went through because your ethnicity is not immune. Who was once the majority becomes the minority and now you are reaping just as the black people have reaped. And for some in certain communities, they're still reaping. Some people are still under the impression that slavery doesn't exist. Slavery still exists. It exists in different ways, but it still exists. Just because it's not happening once again in your community, in your house, doesn't mean that it's not happening. I get weary of talking to people that only see things going on in their neck of the woods. I tell them something about what was done three years ago when people ingested certain things and now there are... those side effects with some individuals and then these people over here who nothing happened to me nothing's wrong with me just because it didn't happen doesn't mean that it's not happening to the mother who lost her child or to the father who lost his son or to the grandmother who could have lived about 5, 10, 15 plus more years but she had pre-existing issues And she thought that she could do something that was going to help her. And now her family is experiencing a loss. But you see how heartless people are? How cold they are? If it's not over there, mm, I don't care. Well, mm, that's just them. (laughs) Oh, well, why are you involving yourself? You see? You got some of them in your family. That's why for some of us, we don't even talk to them. Because we already know what they're going to say, right? We've heard through the grapevine what they're what they've been saying. So if they're acting one way about this issue, you know they're going to act in a whole lot of ways and other issues that you're not necessarily going to agree with or like, and it might even make you so angry that now people want to call the police. <laughs> Jesus help us all. This is why we're going to stay in our word. If Jesus comes, Jesus, you know, the other day I was speaking your word. I was in your word. I I was studying. I was meditating. I wasn't caught up with what these fools are saying over here. You see, that's where we're, that's where we need to be headed as we get closer and closer to that day where God says, you're done. It's over. No, there's no going back and saying bye to family and friends and going back to a job and saving and investing and going to the next invite. You're done. Your, your years are over with. Okay. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. We saw some interesting things in the media where people had opportunities to speak truth and chose not to and wanted to continue to lie, wanted to continue to cover up, wanted to continue to tell people to hold their secrets. Scripture says they rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Sometimes you can see it on the faces of some of these people who show up in media, on the news. You can see it in their eyes. She's swearing up and down. She never said she never did. I wasn't a part of. This is just a whoever or whatever. And then we find out that in closer or upon closer inspection, it turns out that there's something more. Every time. It never fails. It never fails. There's always somebody who says something and then we find out something else. They rely once again on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. I told you all many years ago about the spider mother the spider mother is an interesting interesting spirit individual how it came to me was a combination of both and she weaves her web in the family whether she's above ground or she left some things behind to keep foolishness going she weaves her web And whoever eats their eggs will die. So she weaves things in such a way 
where you see an egg and you might think it's beneficial. Let's just say money or opportunity or a material item of some sort. It's strategically placed or strategically talked about or what have you. And so these issues show up where this brokenness occurs as a result of what one has touched concerning the spider mother or what one has ate. I remember as my grandmother got older and, and she wasn't cooking as well as she once did, people started complaining that their stomach hurt when they ate her food. Okay. There is this problem that wasn't there before, but now it is. And what was once useful becomes useless. And there's no longer that purpose, the plan, the end game, the goal with some of these spider mothers who weave webs. The web for the spider is designed to catch food, right? That's what the spider does. He wants to eat. She wants to eat. But when an individual, moving away from the metaphor, when an individual creates a plan, comes up with a scheme, thinks in his or her head how they're going to go about doing certain things in order to Make someone do something. Sometimes they're caught under their own web or in their own web or in their own mess. They're caught. And sometimes the babies that are also wrapped up in the mess, the flying monkeys, the people that are used to do their bidding, they get caught up in the foolishness as well. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds. So something that you may look at it and say, that situation over there or that task or that deed or what have you it appears to be okay it appears to be a good thing it appears to be something that everybody else does but then you go and you do whatever that is and now you are caught in that evil scheme in that evil web some individuals they have what appears to be harmless, the harmless family function, the harmless family holiday event, the harmless uh, place that you go to to take care of business. And then before long, it becomes a deadly place. Sometimes people are grooming and leading cleverly folks into the web, into the atmosphere where everybody's going to be in the hopes of hurting someone, hurting some group. That's sin. If you're aiding in it, you're aiding in the sin. Just because you don't get hurt by it doesn't mean that it's good. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds and acts of violence are in their hands. Think about this on a broad scale. We're going to be a bit prophetic now. You have the web of the spider mother or spider father who has these eggs that look delightful, that look like something that predators would want 
and they eat and they get consumed by, they die. You go along with the spider mother or spider father's plan. And then you end up caught up in this mess. So many people have done this sort of thing in mainstream media and elsewhere. And so because they did what they did, just as they set out eggs that look delightful to predators, the same thing is going to happen to them. They enter into contracts, agreements. They sit down with certain heads of state. And they'll sign off on documents and they'll be thinking that one thing means what it looks like on the surface when in fact it was just used as bait to get individuals to go along with something while countries go, whoa, wait a minute, that's not what that was really about. And instead it opens up the door for a plethora of events to come where we'll watch media and they'll try to put their spin on it, but it, the truth is going to come from the locals. And this is when they're going to want to shut down, shut off internet. And of course that will come with its share of lies, secrets and cover-ups. Because once people know the truth about a situation, they're going to rebel, they're going to act ugly, they're going to go out in the streets, they're going to pull back their monies. The systems, plural, are going to implode and they don't want that. If there's enough chaos in entertainment world out there, then you won't get to see the real deal, the real truth. But after a while, that stops working and they know that. Those that are in powerful positions, those that don't want you knowing what you know, seeing what you're seeing. But we do have to stay on point with the fact that these deeds are evil deeds. And the acts of violence are in their hands and their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Stay on point. I don't care that they put something out there that was so nice. I don't care if they started a foundation or many foundations. I don't care that they, and a lot of times the Lord showed me that that's nothing more than guilt. It's guilt. Somebody did something dirty. Somebody wants their reputation to look good. They want to leave a legacy of sorts. And so they create a foundation. They create an organization that helps people. But all the while, though, they're still up to their evil deeds. They do something that's destructive. And then they feel bad about it. And they say, oh, you know, let's give the people some money. Let's, you know, build up some things over in that town. You know, all this good stuff is going on over there. Then this way they're not looking over here. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace, they do not know. They do not know. You could say peace, peace, peace until you're blue in the face. You can have peaceful protests. You can do all sorts of things. But those that are in very powerful positions all around this world, that's not what they're after. Peace is like an afterthought. <laughs> Lord Jesus. You see, this Bible is not that old, even though, you know, we talk about how old it is. But when, when you really think about it, man is still doing the same old, same old. He could create all the technology in the world. He could build up all sorts of opportunities for people. He can move land, till land, cultivate land, and make all sorts of things to build upon the land. But at the end of the day, man, he's still up to his devious ways. God is still rebuking man. He is still doing away with man. He is still punishing man. He is still elevating man. He is still praising man. I mean, this God is the same. Come on. Today, yesterday, and forevermore. You got that right. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. Some folks are trying to make deals with the devil. 
His father was a devil. His father's father was a devil. The father's father before that was a devil. And you're going to give a generation of a whole lot of fools a position of power. You deserve whatever comes to you. Hmm. Come on now. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. People making, once again, deals with the devil. And I can see two very powerful individuals shaking hands. And then there's another shaking hands. And then I see some individuals from foreign lands and they're shaking hands. And there is the United States flag among a sea of all these other different flags. And the whole plan is to build up these alliances to promote the sense of peace so that the United States doesn't get marked out of various opportunities, connections, and so forth that they have long been a part of. But there are those countries that are so sick and tired of our country that they want us out the way. Simply put, simply put, God is on the move, saints as well as sinners. And if you think for one minute that God is not speaking and that God is not very much alive, you are dead wrong, literally for some individuals. Because all of the smoke screens and the gaslighting and the dismissive behavior and all of the stuff to distract people and to deflect and to cause their minds to erode or to send, send them to their graves prematurely, all of that makes people angry over time, especially those who are not stupid, who are not sleeping, and who are not playing any games with individuals whatsoever. They are about the truth and only the truth and nothing but the truth. So help them God. Justice. Justice. Hmm. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. So the crooked roads and the spider web and the evil deeds, all of this plays into the hands of the demonic who is then charged with the destruction, with the fall of men, women, and beasts so that new shows up, a new earth. We're on schedule, saints, as well as sinners. We are on schedule. So justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. And that is to come as well. Some individuals want to mess around because they know how to make wind, right? And because they know how to make rain and because they know how to make the earth do certain things on any given day. There are those who have been messing around with the sun. Okay. Hmm. And they want all sorts of strange things to happen. Man wants to control the sun. That's as simple as I can put it. You can ha have all sorts of scientific words behind it or what have you. But the ultimate goal is that man wants to then control the sun. Why? Because to control the sun means that there are going to be times where he deems there should be light. And then there are times where he deems that there shall be darkness. And then he can once again maneuver and control and do what he wants to do with the populace. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what's going on. And when you mess around looking at things and tapping into various entities and wanting certain knowledge and all of that, all you get is a bunch of chaos and nothing really seems to go well, does it? Mm-hmm. I know this part of the message is more for those other individuals on that other scale. Because I intend on talking to every audience before I check out of here. So justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness for brightness, but we walk in deep shadows, deep shadows, so deep that you can't see, you can't feel. It's just a state of darkness all around. 
like the blind, we grope all along, right? We're, we're just groping all along this wall. You want to go down the rabbit hole, you groping. I've done that sort of thing. Go down the rabbit hole, get all this insight, intel, information, what have you. Only to find more on top of more. And then even God himself says, you can go crazy. So don't do it. Okay, thank you very much. I don't. He says, you want to know more, come to me. Hallelujah. And it's been easy breezy ever since. We look for light, but all is darkness for brightness. But we walk in deep shadows like the blind. We grope along the wall, filling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. You ever been around a bunch of older people? Every time they move, every time they got to do something, all of that. Why? Because their bodies are in pain. Their bodies have been used and abused over the years. Their bodies can't take but much, but so much. We look for justice, but find them for deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities, rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, fomenting oppression and revolt, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord. And from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. And as we very well know, Isaiah, he was predicting Jesus coming. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. He's coming again. And because you haven't seen it, because your mother haven't seen it, because your grandmother haven't seen it, and I've been hearing this for so many years, you're going to keep hearing it, and you're going to keep hearing it. We'll all be in our grave, and there will still be someone or some group still talking about Jesus coming, because God said that you will not know the day or the hour. And some have said that we've been in last days for so long. And just because we're in last days for so long does not mean that God's word is not going to reign supreme. I don't listen to fools, especially fools that <laughs> the Bible has outlasted you. Hallelujah. And will continue to outlast you. And it doesn't matter what our commentary is on the Bible. We know that innately within our spirits that something is greater than our little being. Something is beckoning us to do the right thing before our years are completed. Something is telling us that we have to confess sin and repent. Something is saying that we need to stop being rebellious. Someone is telling you to stop being rebellious. The nation became unable to take action against its sins. This is a nation that we live in, right? Sin fills the vacuum left when God's truth no longer fills our lives. Only God can defeat sin. So running around here thinking that you can burn this and smoke this and put this on and, oh, I'll be okay and all right. That is a fool's mistake. Some folks have gone so far as to burn their houses down <laughs> because they thought they could get rid of demonic spirits and entities that were plaguing them. No, get rid of the sin. Hallelujah. Get rid of the sin. And I had read that part about the nation from my life application Bible. 
God, continuing on, God, God would, in fact, act to rescue the nation from enemy armies. Back in the day, it was Assyria and Babylon and to punish wicked Israelites as well. And the Israelites back then were getting punished. And nowadays, us modern lights, <laughs> I'm making up some stuff right there, modern lights, <laughs> ah, we going through our share of troubles. But we go to the one true God and we ask him to rescue us just as they did. Rescue us from sin, O Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Someone is having trouble understanding. Someone is having trouble seeing themselves in this message. But Lord, I know that you have a way of speaking to a person in such a way where it resonates. And so let that be so in Jesus' mighty name. The sin separates us from God, saint as well as sinner. And it's going to keep on separating you until you say, Oh, Heavenly Father, Abba Father, I need you. I need you like never before. I need help with this sin. And you name what that is. And then when God is ready to forgive us, then he will remove. He will remove the separation between us. It's just like a man. It's just like a woman. When they're ready to forgive you, they'll stop with the quiet. They'll stop with the shutting down and shutting you off. Oh, I'm answering somebody's prayer today. Why is it that my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle is just not speaking to me right now? They haven't come to a place of healing, forgiveness, none of it. Until they get to that place, it is going to, going to continue to be that way. But you don't sin, though, as a result of their foolishness. Because for some of them, it's just straight up foolishness. They're petty like that. You don't sin because of it. Okay? Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the one true God. There's a long list of sins that make God angry. Confess it. Confess it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to the one true God. Hallelujah. Glory be to whom all the blessings flow. To whom all blessings flow. If you haven't taken the moment to just pray today do it there is a move in the atmosphere for the Lord to touch us to heal us to reconcile us to restore us I don't mean to sound morbid on some of these messages but we really 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 don't have a whole lot of time on the planet and that's why it's so, so important to get your act together. Some of you all are too old to keep playing these games with the Lord. And, it, and at this point, it's games. It's, it's like on moving on a board, a game board. You got your pawn, and you're rolling dice, and you move so many spaces. And then you pick up a card, and then that card tells you to move back. And so you do. And then you roll the dice again and you move a few more spaces and then you pick a card and then that card tells you to move back. And that card that you keep picking up is the sin. In my little metaphor, illustration, analogy here, parable, whatever you want to call it. It's the sin. You're picking it up because you're in the hope. You're hoping that you're going to get something, something good that's going to move you along the board. And every now and again, sin can, can do just that. You know, you get your little trick, you get your little treat. Mm -hmm. But then at some point, those that are also on that board, they're moving past you. And they're running into their share of issues as well as they're picking up the card. And you're so busy looking at all these people on the game board. All the pawns. You're looking at all the pawns. 
that you don't have enough sense to get off that board and just simply say, Abba, Father, Lord Jesus, have your way. I'm not a child anymore. I'm a grown person. I put childish ways behind me. I put this game up. Mm, okay. The Lord says, all right. I hear you. I hear you. But your actions have to back up what you're saying. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out the description box. Blessings to you.